hello so it is 2020 and this video is for people that are remotely concerned about having any kind of financial success i'm gonna go straight to the point there are certain bank accounts that i believe you should have if you're remotely concerned about being financially successful they are five types of bank accounts i'm not saying everyone should have these accounts but i'm saying that if you have these accounts it kind of it's a it's a way to know if you're diversified enough to actually reach your goal of financial success okay number one is a checking account clearly you need to have a checking account because your checking account is the account that you make daily purchases from if you want if you have a nine to five and um, you want your direct deposit you get direct deposit you want it going into an account use your checking account so if that's like the basic account that I feel like everyone should have whether you have a business or not even if you don't have um, a nine to five um, or direct deposit you can just have a checking account because um, you need an account like how else do you it just makes things so much easier when you have like a regular basic checking account number two is a savings account you have to have your savings account where you take money out of your checking account and put in your savings to save money for emergency purposes right so if you have like your rainy day funds, you want to put it in your savings accounts that you do not touch. You just leave the money there, let it sit there. And um, if you want to, yeah, your rainy day fund, just put it in your savings account, forget about it. You can have um, deposits from your checking account going into your savings account that's automated so that your money can just go in there without you having to do anything every month. That's why you need a savings account. Okay? Now, that is a basic savings account. After that, you need an interest generating savings account. Now, here's how this is different from your regular savings. Your regular savings, like your rainy day fund savings, can be put in an interest generating savings or a non interest generating savings account it depends some banks like a lot of banks um i find out that they your funds that are in your savings account can generate interest if they're up to a certain limit okay because those accounts aren't generally geared towards interest generating savings they're just geared towards savings period right so in my opinion if you have an account a savings account in a bank where you have to have a certain limit in order to generate interest um, let that be your rainy day fund because rainy day fund could you can go in there and it's not a CD you know you can go in there and take money out if you have like medical bills or something unexpected that you don't have money for in your savings in your checking account you can just go into your rainy day fund and you know take the money out it's best if you let the money sit there and not touch it um however you want it to be kind of liquid and by that i mean you cannot put your rainy day fund in a cd because when you put your money in a cd you're not supposed to take it out okay you're supposed to leave it there so you have your regular savings for your rainy day fund, which should be accessible, even though you're advised not to access it until you need to. But what I'm talking about right now is your interest generating savings account, which preferably, preferably should be in an account, a savings account that generates interest regardless of a balance you know like regardless of what your limit is you should be able to generate interest once you put money in it okay and preferably it should be in an account that you cannot access that easily so you cannot have your rainy day fund in your interest generating savings account because you kind of have to let your money sit there for it to generate some interest and um an interest generating savings account is important for a couple of reasons. 
one if you're planning to invest in something let's say let's say you're planning to buy some stock right and the stock is expensive you kind of have to save up to buy the stock you have to save the money somewhere right and it's best if it's in an interest generating savings account that you can withdraw after you've saved enough and then invest it in to whatever it is you want to invest in but in the meantime while you're putting money into this interest generating savings account it will be generating interest for you and there is no limit there's so many banks out there that have interest generating savings accounts with no limits you don't need a limit to begin to generate interest if you put five dollars in there you will begin to generate interest on that five dollars every month okay if you put fifty thousand you generate interest every month so we have three accounts so far we have the check-in uh the savings like a regular savings for your rainy day fund and then you have your interest generating savings account which is not for your rainy day fund you just put the money there let it generate interest leave it there and then you take it out and go invest it in something else or you can let it sit there and generate interest if you don't care about inflation which you should but we're not going to talk about that right now okay account number four is um an investment account so investment accounts are accounts like they're like bank accounts but you use them strictly for your investments so you can have a, an account in um vanguard you can have an investment account with td ameritrade schwab wherever you just open an investment account you fund the account and then out of that you use the funds strictly for investments you can buy shares you can buy um, individual stock or you can buy groups of stock you can buy retirement stock you can buy health oh, you can just buy whatever you want to buy but it has to be an investment right so you need an account in one of these companies and brokerages um, that is strictly for investments and number five will be a business account if you're interested in having a business at all if you sell stuff if you teach if you have a course online that you teach and you get money from them you can um, open a business account even if you if you have a YouTube that generates income for you you can have a business account and the funds from your business will go into your business account it wouldn't come into your regular checking account that way you're not just spending it all you can have it go into your business account if you want to use it to like reinvest in something you can do that if you want to just let it grow and and you know later on decide on what you want to do with it you can do that that way your funds from your business is separate okay so these are the five accounts that I think that in 2020 you should have at least three if not all five of them a check-in account a regular savings account an interest generating savings account an investment account and a business account this will help you kind of guide you to let you know how diversified you are and in what areas um, you need to work on and how to plan it helps with your planning it helps with it helps with separating things so that when it's tax time you know what is what because you don't want all your funds from random places just going in and out of different random places because then it's like how do you separate your business income from your um, investment income that you've set aside and your savings that you set aside for your rainy day fund and it's just things can get really mixed up so it's best to have all of these accounts to keep things separate and for accounting purposes you know general accounting purposes okay that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys.